Hey, this is a video for AP Chemistry all about combustion analysis. So um, we're going to be taking a look at combustion analysis tonight. Um, we're going to incorporate a little bit of some stuff that we've already talked about, some new stuff. So um, what is combustion analysis? So combustion analysis is going to be um, how we determine an empirical formula of a compound essentially by burning it. And so here is what ha is happening here. So um, how this works out is we have a sample Here's a sample. And usually the sample um, contains um, some carbon, some hydrogen, some oxygen, possibly some nitrogen. So it's basically a hydrocarbon. Um, and we're going to put it in a furnace and we're going to provide some oxygen gas to it and we're going to burn it. And the product of this reaction is going to be forced through a couple of absorbers. We have a water absorber and a carbon dioxide absorber. Now, what these do is if we know the mass of each one of these absorbers to start with, and then we burn our sample, we can then take the mass of the water absorber afterwards to determine the mass of the water produced. We can also take the mass of the carbon dioxide absorber to find out the mass of water, the uh, carbon dioxide um, produced. A couple things that we need to remember before we dive into one of these combustion analysis problems. These are often used to determine an unknown um, compound. So let's say a CSI type um, crime scene would be looking at an unknown compound. Um, this would be one way that they could use to determine what that compound is if it's a hydrocarbon. And so um, let's talk real quickly uh, something we talked about over the summer and that being what is an empirical formula and that's going to be the lowest whole number ratio of something and what is a molecular formula which is the actual formula of something. And let me give you a couple of examples. So for example water water would have an empirical formula of H2O. That is the lowest whole number ratio. Um, and that's actually its molecular formula because we cannot reduce that down. It's going to be H2O as well. Um, whereas, let's say, a compound like benzene, C6H6, would have an empirical formula, a lowest whole number ratio of CH, we would divide both of them by six, whereas its molecular formula would be C6H6. And we did some calculations on these over the summertime um, on how to calculate empirical formulas. Um, we're gonna we'll kind of revisit that as well. Um, one of the other things that we need to keep in mind is we also know that from a formula, we can calculate moles of individual elements. And here's what I mean by this. Um, for example, let's say we have a problem here, is if we have 2.5 moles of carbon dioxide, how many moles of carbon are in 2.5 moles of carbon dioxide, and how many moles of oxygen are in 2.5 moles? So this would be a really simple thing to do. So for example, if we have 2.5 moles of CO2, we can just use a mole ratio, because in every one mole of carbon dioxide, you have one mole of carbon because there's only one carbon in the carbon dioxide. So they would be the same. So then we'd have 2.5 moles of carbon. Now, if we had 2.5 moles of CO2 and we wanted to know how many moles of oxygen are in CO2, well, in one mole of CO2, we're going to have two moles of oxygen because there are two oxygens per one molecule, or there's two moles of oxygen per one mole of carbon dioxide. So then we would have five moles of oxygen. Okay, and so that's kind of the basis of what we're going to be talking about here with respect to combustion analysis problems. Let's dive right into one of these problems and see what we have. Okay, so it tells us that we have rubbing alcohol. It's an alcohol, and it's composed of three elements, a carbon, a hydrogen, and an oxygen. Okay, tells us that if we burn 0.25 grams of this alcohol, it's going to produce an amount of CO2 and it's going to produce an amount of water. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our, our mass of our CO2 and we're going to convert that into our mass of carbon formed. And then, and, and we have to do it that way. Um, I would like to go to moles, but I, I'll tell you why I can in a moment. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our mass 
of water and we're going to convert it to our mass of oxygen. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to back up there. I, I didn't mean to say that. Um, we're going to take our mass of our water and convert it to mass of hydrogen. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our mass of our alcohol and we're going to subtract it from the mass of the carbon plus the mass of the hydrogen and that'll give us the mass of our oxygen. Once we have the mass of our oxygen, um, then it just becomes one of those empirical formula problems where we just have to go convert back to moles, divide by the lowest number of moles, and hopefully that gives us a whole number ratio. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's start with our mass of carbon dioxide. So, so it told us that we have 0 0.561 grams of carbon dioxide. Um, what I'm going to do, like I said, is I'm going to convert this to grams of carbon. Okay, a couple steps to do this, pretty easy. First off, we're going to convert to moles. One mole of CO2 is equal to 44.01 grams of CO2, which is the molar mass. So now we've converted to moles of CO2. Um, then I'm going to go one mole of CO2 is equal to one mole of carbon. Cool. And the last thing I'm going to do is one mole of carbon is equal to 12.01 grams of carbon. That just convert us will convert us to from grams of CO2 to grams of carbon. So let me pause real quick and I'll run through my calculator. Okay, so I'm coming up with a 0 0.153 grams of carbon. We're going to save on, save that answer there for a second. Do the same thing here with my water. My water, I'm going to go 0 0.306 grams of H2O, and I'm going to do a conversion all the way over to grams of hydrogen like I said. Okay, so we're going to say one mole of water is equal to 18.02 grams of water, molar mass of water. Then in one mole of H2O, we have to remember, this is really important, that we actually have two moles of hydrogen. And then one mole of hydrogen is equal to 1.01 grams of hydrogen. Double check all of my, um, my units, grams of hydrogen cancels grams of hydrogen. Moles cancels with moles, moles cancels with moles, back to grams. Okay, so we have our unit. Um, let's run this to the calculator and see what we get. Okay, so I have an answer of 0 0.0343 grams of hydrogen. Now, um, what we're going to do to calculate the mass of the oxygen, like I said, is we're going to use the original mass of our alcohol. Remember, the alcohol was composed of three components. It was going to be hydrogen, oxygen, and um, carbon. And we now calculated the mass of carbon, mass of hydrogen. We're just going to use subtraction to get the mass. So the mass of our alcohol originally was 0 0.255 grams. That's our alcohol. We're going to subtract that from um, 0 0.153 grams, which is our carbon, plus 0 0.0343. And that is going to give us an answer of... 0 0.068 grams, let me scooch this down a little bit, of oxygen. Okay, so now we've hammered out, we've hammered out three masses, which is a good thing. Um, but remember, our ultimate goal is we want an empirical formula. And in empirical formulas, we always, we need moles. So um, what we're going to do real quickly here is we're going to just convert everybody back to moles real quick. And so I'm just going to take my masses once again. So I have 0 0.153 grams of carbon. Let's scroll down a little bit more here. And then I'm going to have 0 0.0343 grams of hydrogen. Let's scroll down a little bit more. And I've got 0 0.068 grams of oxygen. Now I have three, three masses, which is really easy because now all I have to do is convert each one of those back to moles. And then once we're in moles, we can divide by the lowest number of moles, just like we did when we did empirical formula problems. So um, let's say we're going to go um, uh, one mole of carbon is equal to 12.01 grams of carbon, which is our molar mass. One mole of hydrogen is equal to 1.01 grams of hydrogen. And one mole of oxygen is equal to 16.0 grams of oxygen. So now we're going to get three answers, moles, carbon, moles hydrogen 
and moles of oxygen. And so let's take a look at what we get when we run this through. So um, I get 0 0.0128 moles of carbon. I get 0 0.0 340. That's kind of sloppy. Let me let me erase that. 0 0.0340. And I get 0 0.0043. Okay, so there we go. So now what we want to do is we want to divide all of these by the lowest number of moles. So to get our empirical formula. So our lowest number of moles is going to be our oxygen, looks like because we have 0 0.00, so let's divide 0 0.0043, 0 0.0043, and 0 0.0043, and obviously this is going to give us a whole number. That gives us a 1. The carbon gives us a 3, and the hydrogen gives us like a 7.9 something, which I'm going to go ahead and call 8. Okay, so I have, I mean, because it was pretty close to 8. So I have relatively whole numbers. So now my empirical formula is going to be carbon, 3, hydrogen, 8, oxygen, 1, just one oxygen. And that's how we use um, a combustion analysis problem to convert to um, empirical formula. Now if they gave us the molar mass, the actual molar mass, we could compare that molar mass to the empirical formula's molar mass to see if we had the same formula or if we needed to multiply through, which we did before. So let's just kind of kind of sum this all up real quick. So we have, we're going to be probably given our mass of our sample, and then we're probably going to be given our mass of our water and our mass of our CO2. Now, sometimes the sample only has carbon and hydrogen in it, or sometimes it will throw in the oxygen or maybe a nitrogen or something. And that's why we need the mass of the sample. From the mass of the water, we're going to convert to grams of hydrogen. From the mass of the carbon dioxide, we convert to grams of carbon. Uh, we can use these grams to subtract out the mass of the sample if we wanted to find oxygen or nitrogen. Or if we don't want to, if they don't give us, if, let's say it's just a pure hydrocarbon with only carbon hydrogen, we might instead choose to go just to moles of hydrogen and go to moles of carbon and then just divide by the lowest to get our, our empirical formula. It really depends on what they throw at us. And we're going to do some practice problems in class tomorrow that kind of addresses this. And you'll see the different ways this, that this plays out. Okay, so that's homework for tonight. Empirical formula, combustion analysis.